The Climb by Dylan Furry Prologue When George Mallory was asked, Why do you want to climb Mount Everest? He responded with, Because it's there. These words have become the three most famous words in mountaineering. They've inspired many to reach for the stars and climb these giants around the world. The first recorded attempt to climb Mount Everest was by the British in the 1922 British Mount Everest expedition, of which George Mallory was part. Their attempt failed. They only reached about 8,321 metres above sea level. Two years later, Mallory would return to the mountain in the 1924 British Mount Everest expedition. This expedition would lead to the greatest mountaineering mystery in history. Did George Mallory and Andrew Irvine summit Mount Everest? After being missing for over 70 years, an expedition finally found the mummified remains of the legendary climber at the foot of the Northeast Ridge. It wouldn't be until 29 years later that the first recorded summit took place when Kiwi, Edmund Hillary and Nepali Indian Sherpa Tenzing Norgay reached the summit on 29 May 1953. News of the discovery of Mallory's body in 1999 was greeted with enthusiasm by Sir Edmund, despite its implications for his record-breaking claim. He said it would be very appropriate if Mallory had reached the summit first, adding, he was really the initial pioneer of the whole idea of climbing Mount Everest. To fill the quintet is Rob Hall from Adventures Consultants, the man who changed modern Everest forever. He started leading expeditions up and down the mountain and many followed his example from all around the world. These men are Stevo's heroes. They are the reason for his attempt at Everest. Ever since he was a child, he loved the outdoors and climbing things. At ten, he climbed Table Mountain, Montessor, as well as Tabana and Tlenyana, the highest mountain in southern Africa. His goal was to one day climb the seven summits, the highest mountain on each of the seven continents. If he was still motivated after reaching the seven summits, he would aim for the seven second summits and the seven third summits, the second and third highest mountain on each continent. At eleven, he climbed his first of the seven summits, Mount Kilimanjaro, Africa. At age twelve, he climbed Elbrus, Europe. At thirteen, he climbed Punjak Jaya, Australasia. At fourteen, he climbed Aconcagua, South America. At fifteen, he climbed Denali, North America. At age seventeen, he wanted to climb Everest, the highest of the seven, with Vinson Antarctica being his last. It was finally time to climb Mount Everest, as he'd worked his body hard for two years to finally conquer the beast. But he knew that no matter who you are or how much experience you have, nothing can prepare you for Everest, as the last word always belonged to Sagarmata. The Climb Steve Ophermark stared out the window of the car as it sped along the highway, his heart pounding with excitement and nerves. Today was the day he'd been eagerly anticipating for months, the day he would embark on the adventure of a lifetime. Steve-O had dreamt of climbing Mount Everest since he was a child, and now that dream was about to become a reality. The car pulled up outside O.R. Tumbo International Airport, the bustling gateway to countless destinations around the world. Stevo took a deep breath, the air thick with the scent of jet fuel. He could hardly believe that this was finally happening. The boot sprung open and Stevo grabbed his backpack from it and closed it again. He stared at the entrance of the O.R. Tumbo airport. His parents walked behind him as he entered the enormous airport. They stopped and his parents hugged him, crying. It was their son's lifelong dream to climb Mount Everest and it was finally happening. They stared at his shirt. It read, Off to climb Mount Everest, with the mountain in the background. Nah, let's cover it with the flag, said his father jokingly. His father handed him the South African flag to hold for a photo. He shouted, Everest, as the photo was taken. People might have looked at him weird, but he felt happy. His dream was finally coming true. He hugged his parents goodbye, as he didn't know if he'll return from Everest. As he walked further, his eyes widened at the sight of the massive departure boards displaying flights to far-flung corners of the globe. His gaze lingered on the listing for Dubai, United Arab Emirates, the starting point for his Everest expedition. It seemed surreal that he would soon be at the heart of the Himalayas, standing at the base of the world's tallest peak.
The check-in counters beckoned and Stevo joined the queue, his backpack slung over his shoulder containing his carefully chosen climbing gear and essentials. He had spent countless hours researching and testing each item, ensuring they would withstand the harsh conditions he would encounter on the mountain. As he handed over his passport and received his boarding pass, a mix of excitement and anxiety coursed through his veins. Doubts crept into his mind. Was he truly ready for such a formidable challenge at his age? But then he remembered the countless hours of physical training, the mental preparation, and the unwavering support of his family and friends. Steve-O knew he had worked hard to reach this point, and he was determined to prove himself. In the departure lounge, Steve-O found a quiet corner and sat down. He had dedicated himself to mountaineering, climbing numerous peaks around the world. The more summits he conquered, the stronger his desire to face the ultimate challenge, Everest, had grown. He entered the plane and found his seat in the aircraft. He sat down at the window seat and looked out. A man came down the aisle and sat next to him. They greeted each other, but the man's eyes squinted as he read Stevo's shirt. Which company are you climbing with? the man asked. I'm climbing with Peak Voyager, Stevo replied with a smile. No way! So am I. I'm Nathan, by the way, Nathan Knight, said the man. Stevo. Are you also climbing Everest this year? Yes, I am. Wow! Can't believe two total strangers sitting next to each other on the plane are doing the same thing. Wow! Both Stevo and Nathan laughed. How many do you have under your belt? Six of the seven summits, hoping to make it seven in the next few weeks. How old are you, if I may ask? Wow, that's great. I'm 17, by the way. Nathan lost all color in his face. He couldn't believe a 17-year-old was climbing Everest. Nathan asked him why he thought at 17 he would be able to climb Everest. I don't know if I'll reach the summit. Everest is a beast of its own. It's nothing like anything I've climbed before. How many of the seven have you climbed? Nathan's jaw dropped when Steve revealed he'd climbed five of the seven summits. The engines roared to life and he watched as the runway disappeared beneath him. The plane lifted off, carrying him closer to his dream, higher into the sky and closer to the towering majesty of Mount Everest. As the plane soared above the clouds, his heart soared with it. He knew that this journey was not just about reaching the summit. It was about pushing his limits, embracing the unknown and discovering the depths of his own strength. With each passing moment, the allure of Everest grew stronger and Stevo was more determined than ever to answer its call. The plane touched down at Dubai International Airport and the two climbers eagerly unbuckled their seatbelts. Stepping out of the aircraft, they were greeted by a rush of warm air and the desert landscape stretching out before them. The contrast between the arid terrain of Dubai and the snow-covered peaks of the Himalayas couldn't have been more pronounced. As they made their way through the bustling airport, they marveled at the modernity and grandeur that surrounded them. The gleaming floors, towering ceilings and luxurious amenities were a stark contrast to the rugged simplicity they would soon encounter in the mountains. Their layover in Abu Dhabi was a long time, but they took a moment to indulge in a taste of Middle Eastern culture. They savoured the aromatic spices of local cuisine, sipped on traditional tea, and admired the intricate designs of the architecture that blended ancient traditions with modern innovation. The time passed quickly, and soon it was time for Stevo and Nathan to board their connecting flight to Kathmandu, Nepal. They joined the throngs of travellers making their way through the airport, their excitement building with every step. Unfortunately for them, the two didn't have seats next to each other, so they sat in silence listening to music and reading. Stevo glanced at the window and saw the shimmering city lights of Dubai fading into the distance. As the plane descended into Trebuvan International Airport, the sprawling city revealed itself beneath them. The sight of the snow-capped peaks in the distance sent a jolt of excitement through Stevo's veins. The majestic Himalayas, beckoning like a siren's call, were now within reach. Stepping off the plane, Stevo and Nathan were greeted by the vibrant chaos of Kathmandu. The air was thick with the scent of incense and the sounds of honking horns, mingling with the laughter and chatter of locals and travellers alike. It was a sensory overload, but amidst the chaos they found a sense of serenity. They knew that this city, with its rich history and vibrant culture, was the gateway to their Everest adventure. They collected their gear, making sure everything was in order. 
Once outside the airport, they grabbed a taxi to the Yak and Yeti Hotel where the team would stay while in Kathmandu. After a short drive, they arrived at the Yak and Yeti Hotel, a sanctuary in the heart of Kathmandu. Stevo breathed a sigh of relief as they stepped into the tranquil lobby. The hotel's elegant decor and serene ambiance provided a welcome respite from the vibrant energy outside. They are welcomed at the entrance of the hotel and showed the way to their fellow climbers. In the lounge, they meet the rest of the team. They were the last of the clients to arrive in Kathmandu. Everyone greeted the two South African climbers with hugs and handshakes. The team leader of Peak Voyager, George Anthony, introduced himself to Stevo and Nathan. George was a veteran Everest climber and had already summited it nine times before. This would be his tenth summit of the mountain. The room was filled with anticipation as the guide began the briefing for their Mount Everest expedition. Maps, photographs and equipment lay scattered across the table, illustrating the magnitude of the challenge that lay ahead. Well, this is everyone, said George. Now, before we begin, I must welcome you all to the beautiful city of Kathmandu. Let's give a round of applause to the people of Yak and Yeti Hotel for letting us stay here before we head up to our new home, Base Camp. The climbers clap hands, cheer and whistle in thanks to the employees of the hotel. They smile back and thank them. Now, let's get to what you are here for, climbing Mount Everest. Everest is not just a mountain. It's a living breathing entity that demands our utmost respect. We're about to embark on a journey that will test us in ways we've never imagined. You will be following the footsteps of some legendary climbers, Mallory, Irvine, Hillary, and Norgay, just to name a few. Their reason to climb the mountain was to be the first. What is your reason? There is one person here that I would like to share why they want to climb Everest. What's your reason, Stevo? Everyone looked at the 17-year-old. Well, my dream is to reach the seven summits. Everest would be my sixth, with Vincent being my last at the end of this year. I climbed my first of the seven six years ago, being Kilimanjaro. Stevo could hear the sounds of impressiveness coming from his fellow climbers. Now, back to Peak Voyager. For those of you who want to reach the summit, please listen to us. We are the experts. Listen either to us or our Sherpas. They know this mountain better than anyone. One thing you must remember when up there is that human beings are simply not meant to function at the cruising altitude of a 747. Once you reach the death zone, your body will start shutting down. It's our job to get you up to the summit and back down to base camp safely. We have always turned people around who we know couldn't make it. Therefore, we can proudly say that we have never had a death on the mountain. But Everest is a beast. No matter how well we prepare you during acclimatization, the last word always belongs to the mountain. You could hear a pin drop the moment he said it. Everyone knew exactly what he was talking about. Well, that is all from me tonight. Eat, drink, sleep, do whatever you please, because tomorrow we trek. Everyone went their separate ways. Nathan went to get himself a drink, while Stevo decided to take his bag up to his room. He sat on his bed, looking out the window at the Himalayas. He thought of the snow beneath his feet, the coldness of the air against his face. He was ready to face Sagarmata. Buzz, buzz, buzz. The alarm woke Stevo up. The whole team got up early in the morning on day two to eat breakfast that the hotel had prepared for them followed by a quick flight to Lukla Airport, the starting point of their trek to Everest Base Camp. The climbers came together in the dining area for breakfast. Stevo decided on some coffee, daika kebab and lamb pulao. A slight burp at the end of his meal signified to the rest that he was full. He was the last one to finish his meal. Everyone was now ready to get to Lukla Airport to start their journey to Base Camp. Nowhere in the world will you find a more memorable and enjoyable flight like the one to Lukla Airport. The only thing you can see is the mighty Himalayas and it's breathtaking. The peaks of the mountain disappear and reappear from the clouds like dolphins jumping in and out of the water alongside boats. Lukla Airport sat 2,840 meters above sea level and with it came a small village, another breathtaking experience. 
As the pilot landed the plane, he slammed on the brakes and the reverse gear to prevent the plane from crashing into the mountainside. Stevo's nerves were already Everest high, but he knew there was no turning back now. In a few days, he would reach Everest Base Camp and hopefully reach the summit of the highest mountain in the world. In the next few days, they would hike about 90 kilometers to Base Camp where some Peak Voyager staff were getting it ready for their arrival. The first day would be about three hours of hiking. Instead of going up from Lukla at 2,840 meters, they would be traveling downhill to Pak Ding at 2,610 meters. It would be where they stay the night. Along the way, Stevo happily greeted the Nepali people as they go about their daily lives. The team stopped at a lodge and rested for the night before a terribly busy day. The next morning, the group set off from Pak Ding at 2,610 meters to Namche Bazaar at 3,440 meters. They tracked through a pine forest and over the turquoise milk river. Even though it was quite steep, Stevo pulled through and made it to Namche Bazaar. Since it was a weekend while they were in Namche Bazaar, they met up with locals at their weekly market day. Some decided to spend the day in the market, while Stevo headed to the lodge where they would stay to rest until they track again in the morning. As he headed to the lodge, he could see a lengthy line of zopkyos, pack animals that are a cross between cows and yaks. The following day, the team tracked to Teng Buche Monastery at 3,860 meters. It was where many Buddhist monks from Tibet lived after they fled from Chinese-occupied Tibet. The sky was clear during their trek to the monastery. They could see Everest towering above them. They had amazing Sherpas with their team. Steve loved talking to them about their time on Everest. They suggested that the team attend two blessing ceremonies while a full puja cleansing ceremony is given at base camp. They headed into the monastery, sat cross-legged on the cold stone floor and watched in awe at the monks. Stevo had absolutely no idea what they were busy saying, but he loved it. For the next day, they were to have a rest day in Tengbuche to acclimatize. Stevo looked out the window of the lodge in Tengbuche village at the Kumbu Valley and saw a couple of yaks. He watched a baby yak drinking from their mother. He smiled. The nervousness was gone, for now. He just wanted to relax for the day as they would be traveling above 4,200 meters the next day to Ferice. Steve could feel the air getting thinner and colder as they go higher up towards base camp. He has already had trouble with a runny nose on the track. The last few days of the track were a blur of excitement and wonder. As the days went on, the track became more challenging. The inclines grew steeper, the air thinner, and the weather more unpredictable. Despite the physical challenges, however, the track was also a journey of self-discovery. As they approached base camp, they were greeted by a sea of colorful tents and the buzz of activity with climbers from all over the world preparing for their ascent, and the mountain itself looming up in the background like a giant sentinel. But it was not until they finally set foot in base camp that they truly understood the scale and grandeur of the mountain. Stevo could see all the diverse types of tents at base camp for peak voyages, dining tent, sleeping tents, and the medical facility. The dining tent served as a central meeting place for climbers and support staff where they would gather to share meals, plan their route up the mountain, and exchange information about conditions on the mountain. The medical facility had a doctor and other trained professionals to aid climbers who arrived back at base camp from higher up the mountain, as well as those injured on their way to base camp from lower. The main tent was used as the communication hub where climbers and support staff would stay in touch with the outside world, as well as with each other, as they navigate the challenging conditions on the mountain. Despite the harsh conditions, base camp was a place of incredible beauty and wonder. The site was surrounded by stunning peaks and glaciers with a view of the summit of Mount Everest visible on clear days. The landscape was stark and rugged, with the sounds of ice cracking and avalanches rumbling in the distance. Despite this, the natural beauty of the Himalayas was awe-inspiring. The weather, on the other hand, was super unpredictable. One moment you will tan in the sun and the next a storm cloud will dump rain on you. The climbers had to be prepared for this, so they wore different layers of clothing to help them regulate their body temperature and they would carry waterproof jackets and pants in case the cloud came over. As the sun began to set, 
Everyone was invited into the dining tent for a briefing on what they could expect. Welcome to Everest Base Camp, said George. As you can see, we have the United Nations out here. So, let's get started. None of you have met her yet. This is Letitia, our base camp manager. He points at a woman sitting to his right. She will be your mom for the time being, and to the left of me is Julian, our camp doctor. Take it away, you two. Hi, everyone, said Letitia. Like George said, I'm the base camp manager for Peak Voyager, and if you have any problems, you can come to me. I only know about admin around here, but Julian will explain everything that is important. Your health is more important than knowing where to take a dump at base camp. Thank you, Letitia. So, everyone... I am Julian, and I'll be your doctor for your time on Everest. Please listen to me carefully. If you want to reach the summit of Everest and make it safely down the mountain, you need oxygen. That is the most important thing that will keep you alive. In order to prepare yourself to climb in the thin air, George will take you up and down the mountain to get your body used to the thin air. You will climb to each camp, except Camp 4, and then make your way back to base camp, before your final ascent of the mountain. This is especially important in acclimatizing your body. Unfortunately, this means climbing through the Kumbu Icefall multiple times, one of the most dangerous parts of the mountain. There are tons and tons of glacial ice moving below your feet. There are syracs and glaciers that will kill you if you're not careful. Once you reach the higher parts of the mountain, look out for hypothermia, haste and hape. I've heard of hypoxic climbers ripping their clothes from their bodies on the south summit. So please get yourself down to base camp as fast and safely as possible before it becomes fatal. Everyone gave him a round of applause and headed out to their tents. Stevo and Nathan decided to share a tent. Hey Stevo, can you believe we made it to Everest base camp? The journey here was intense, but we did it. I know, it's insane. I've dreamed about this moment for so long. The view from here is absolutely mind-blowing. It truly is. The towering peaks and the vast expanse of snow is awe-inspiring. You're only 17 and you've already achieved something incredible by making it here. I've enjoyed sharing my climbing experience with you and seeing you grow as a climber. You've shown tremendous determination and maturity beyond your years, said Nathan. Thanks, Nathan. I couldn't have done it without your guidance and support. You've been like a mentor to me throughout this whole adventure, smiled Steve-O. You've inspired me, Nathan. Your expertise and passion for mountaineering have fueled my own love for it. I'm grateful to have you as a friend and climbing partner. Steve-O and Nathan climbed into their sleeping bags and fell asleep. It was their first of many nights on Everest. They would start training for the Kumbu Icefall in the morning. The Kumbu Icefall stands as one of the most treacherous and formidable challenges on the path to Mount Everest's summit. Its ever-shifting ice formations, towering seracs and deep crevices have earned it the reputation of being a treacherous and unpredictable obstacle. Before embarking on the climb, Climbers must undergo rigorous training and acclimatization in the lower regions of the Everest base camp. This preparation includes physical conditioning, technical skills development, and altitude adaptation. Climbers are equipped with specialized gear, including crampons, ice axes, and ropes to aid them in navigating the treacherous terrain of the Kumbu Icefall. After three days of training and a day of rest at base camp, the team was ready to advance to Camp 1. Stevo and Nathan stood at the edge of the Kumbu Icefall, their faces etched with a mixture of awe and trepidation. The Icefall, an immense and unpredictable obstacle, loomed before them like a frozen maze of danger and beauty. This treacherous section would be their first major test on the journey to conquer Mount Everest. With their crampons secured and ice axes in hand, they followed their Sherpa guide, who expertly navigated the treacherous terrain. Every step was a calculated move, and they carefully avoided deep crevices and delicate ice bridges. As they progressed deeper into the icefall, the true magnitude of the challenge became apparent. 
Stevo's heart pounded in his chest as he maneuvered across a narrow ladder spanning a deep crevice. Each rung felt like a lifeline, a fragile connection to safety amidst the gaping void beneath. The weight of their backpacks seemed to intensify with each step, but they pressed on, their determination unwavering. Their months of physical training and mental preparation were put to the test as they meticulously placed each foot, searching for stable footing amidst the treacherous ice and snow. The physical exertion was overwhelming. The thin mountain air made each breath a struggle, and the grueling effort required to move through the icefall drained their energy. But they pushed forward. Their Sherpa guide led them through narrow corridors between towering ice formations, offering words of encouragement and wisdom along the way. He emphasized the importance of patience, caution, and precise footwork. Stevo and Nathan absorbed his guidance, their trust in his expertise growing with each passing moment. Time seemed to blur as they continued their arduous ascent. Stevo felt his muscles ache and his mind teeter on the edge of exhaustion. Yet there was a sense of exhilaration coursing through his veins, an intoxicating mix of fear and triumph that fueled his determination. As they neared the end of the icefall, the terrain gradually became less treacherous. The ice gave way to rocky outcrops and a glimpse of the majestic mountains beyond. Stevo's heart swelled with a renewed sense of purpose and accomplishment. They had conquered the Kumbu Icefall, a monumental feat in itself. They paused for a moment, allowing the significance of their progress to sink in. He looked back at the immense icefall, marveling at the beauty and unforgiving nature of the mountain. It was a humbling reminder that their journey was far from over. With their Sherpa guide leading the way, Stevo and Nathan continued their ascent, their hearts filled with a newfound strength and determination. The Kumbu Icefall had tested them, but it had also provided them with a taste of what lay ahead, the formidable challenge of Mount Everest. As they moved forward to Camp 1, Stevo couldn't help but feel a deep sense of gratitude for the opportunity to be part of this extraordinary expedition. He knew that the path to the summit would be demanding, but he was determined to face each obstacle head-on, drawing on the lessons learned from the Kumbu Icefall. The mountain called to him, its towering peaks beckoning like a siren's song. He answered that call, knowing that the journey would push them to their limits, physically and mentally. Stevo, weary, yet filled with anticipation, arrived at Camp 1 after a challenging ascent from the Kumbu Icefall. The camp, nestled in a small rocky enclave, offered a temporary respite from the unforgiving mountain terrain. As he unburdened himself from his heavy backpack, Stevo and Nathan took a moment to catch their breath and absorb their surroundings. The sheer beauty of the Himalayas unfolded before them, with towering peaks and vast glaciers stretching as far as the eye could see. Camp One, a collection of small tents and makeshift shelters, hummed with activity as other climbers prepared for their own summit bids. The air was filled with a palpable sense of determination and camaraderie. Stevo felt a deep connection to his fellow climbers, united by a shared goal and an understanding of the magnitude of their endeavor. After exploring Camp One together, the team Sherpas invited them for cups of steaming tea, offering much-needed nourishment and a moment of respite. Stevo and Nathan gratefully accepted, the hot liquid seeping into their tired bodies, rejuvenating them for the night ahead. As evening descended upon Camp One, the temperature dropped dramatically, reminding them of the harsh reality of the mountain. Stevo and Nathan huddled together in their tent, seeking warmth and solace. The sound of the wind howling outside echoed their anticipation, a constant reminder of the unpredictable nature of Everest. <clears throat> the night at Camp One was filled with fitful sleep and vivid dreams. Stevo found himself caught between a state of exhaustion and excitement, his mind drifting between the challenges they had faced and the summit that lay ahead. It was a restless night, but as the first rays of sunlight pierced through the thin fabric of the tent, 
A renewed sense of purpose filled their weary bodies. The morning at Camp One arrived with a flurry of activity. Stevo and Nathan emerged from their tent, greeted by a breathtaking sunrise that bathed the surrounding peaks in a warm golden glow. It was the sight that reaffirmed their determination to continue the journey. The team gathered in the central area, finalizing their preparations to descend back to base camp through the Kumbu Icefall. Gear was meticulously checked, ropes were secured, and safety protocols were reviewed once again. Their Sherpa guides, the unsung heroes of the mountain, led the way. With unwavering confidence and expertise, they navigated the treacherous path, guiding Stevo and Nathan through the labyrinthine icefall. Each step was taken with caution as they retraced their previous footsteps, now familiar with the intricacies of the terrain. As they descended through the icefall, the sheer magnitude of the challenge they had conquered on their way to Camp 1 became evident once more. Stevo's heart swelled with pride and gratitude for the experience and the opportunity to witness the raw beauty of the mountain up close. The journey through the icefall was a blend of physical exertion and mental focus. Stevo and Nathan moved with a newfound confidence, their training and experience guiding their every step. The Kumbu Icefall, once an unknown entity filled with trepidation, became a familiar path, albeit no less dangerous. As they neared the end of the icefall, a sense of accomplishment washed over them. Stevo and Nathan savoured the much-needed rest day at base camp. After their arduous climb through the Kumbu Icefall from Camp 1, their bodies and minds craved a moment of respite. Stevo and Nathan joined their fellow climbers in the communal dining tent, sharing stories and laughter over steaming cups of tea. They marvelled at the diverse group of individuals who had come together, united by their shared passion for conquering the world's highest peak. As the sun bathed the camp in a warm glow, Stevo took the opportunity to write in his diary about the experience up to that point. He recounted the trek from airport to base camp, the trek through the Kumbu Icefall, the night at Camp 1, and the return through the Icefall. In the late afternoon, he took a leisurely walk around base camp, exploring the array of tents and flags that dotted the landscape. He exchanged greetings with fellow climbers and admired the strength and resolve etched on their faces. As the evening approached, Stevo met up with Nathan in their tent. They snuggled in their sleeping bags, reminiscing about what lay ahead in the morning. They would track back to Camp 1, spend a night at the camp, and then move up to Camp 2 for a night before returning to base camp again. The problem was, both the journey to and from Camp 2 meant the Kumbu Icefall had to be crossed once again. With renewed energy and determination, Stevo and Nathan joined the other peak voyager climbers and headed to the icefall. Their bodies had started to acclimatize to the altitude. Though they were familiar with the route through the icefall, it was still extremely dangerous. Finally, after making their way through the icefall, they reached Camp 1 again. They settled in their tents, savoring the simple comforts they had brought with them. The soothing warmth of the hot beverages and the nourishment of the hearty meal rejuvenated their bodies. The night at Camp 1 was a test of endurance. The cold penetrated their bones and the wind howled outside their tents. It was most definitely a worse night than they had when they slept there a few days prior. The early morning light cast a soft glow on the tents at Camp 1 as Stevo and Nathan prepare for the ascent to Camp 2. While getting their gear ready, they engaged in quiet conversation. Can you believe how far we've come? Stevo asked, a hint of amazement in his voice. Nathan nodded, a smile tugging at the corner of his lips. It feels like just yesterday we were standing at Oortumbo Airport, filled with anticipation and uncertainty. Mount Everest has a way of pushing us beyond our limits, Stevo mused. But it's also a journey of self-discovery. We've learned so much about ourselves and what we're truly capable of. Nathan's eyes sparkled with a mix of pride and gratitude. Absolutely. It's not just about reaching the summit. It's about the process, the friendships we've formed, and the lessons we'll carry with us long after we leave this mountain. Their conversation shifted to the immense beauty that surrounded them. 
They marveled at the majestic peaks that stretched before their eyes, the rugged terrain that challenged their every step, and the ever-changing weather that reminded them of nature's unpredictable power. It's humbling to be in the presence of such grandeur, Stevo whispered, his voice filled with reverence. Nathan nodded in agreement. We're just small specks in this vast wilderness. It reminds us of our place in the grand scheme of things. Silence settled between them as they absorbed the magnitude of the moment. The wind whispered through the camp, carrying with it a sense of anticipation and excitement. They knew that the road ahead would be arduous and demanding, but they also knew that they were ready to face whatever challenges lay in their path. Let's do this, Stevo said, his voice brimming with determination. Nathan placed a hand on his friend's shoulder, a gesture of solidarity. We've come this far together, and we'll keep pushing forward together, one step at a time. With renewed resolve, Stevo and Nathan finished preparing their gear. They double-checked their equipment, ensuring that everything was in its place. They tightened their boots, adjusted their backpacks, and mentally prepared themselves for the climb to Camp 2. As they stood up, ready to embark on the next leg of their journey, they exchanged a knowing look. It was a silent acknowledgement of the challenges they had overcome and the ones that still lay ahead. With each step, they carried the lessons learned, the strength forged, and the unwavering belief that they were capable of reaching greater heights. Together, the Peak Voyager team set off towards Camp 2. Fueled by determination and the unwavering support of their team, Stevo and Nathan embarked on the final stretch of their climb to Camp 2. The air was thin, and their bodies were weary from the arduous ascent. But they pressed on, their eyes fixed on the prize that awaited them. Step by step, they navigated the steep incline, their crampons biting into the icy surface. The wind whispered through the cracks and crevices, carrying with it a sense of anticipation. Stevo and Nathan drew strength from the collective energy of their teammates, their shared goal propelling them forward. The path to Camp 2 tested their physical endurance and mental fortitude. The relentless ascent demanded every ounce of their strength. As they climbed higher, the oxygen became even scarcer, adding to the challenge. Yet, in the face of adversity, Stevo and Nathan found resilience. They drew upon the lessons learned in the months of training, the belief that they were capable of achieving greatness. Their determination to conquer the mountain burned brightly within them. Camp 2 seemed like a mirage throughout the walk, never getting closer. The last half an hour was the most mentally challenging. The route went up in an angle, and once in Camp 2, it was a steep walk up to the rising rock gully where the tents were. After an endless, slow march through the silent valley, the Peak Voyager team reached Camp 2. They took a moment to catch their breath, allowing the magnitude of their achievement to sink in. The view from Camp 2 was awe-inspiring, with snow-capped peaks stretching as far as the eye could see. The beauty of the Himalayas embraced them, momentarily easing their fatigue. Stevo and Nathan joined their teammates at the campsite, their faces beaming with a sense of triumph. They exchanged high fives and embraces, celebrating this milestone on their journey. The camp bustled with activity as climbers settled into their tents, preparing for a well-deserved rest. Stevo secured his gear and sought solace within the confines of his temporary home, a shelter amidst the vast wilderness. As the two of them settled into their sleeping bags, the weariness in their bodies was eclipsed by a sense of accomplishment. As sleep claimed Stevo, he drifted into a world of dreams, where he stood atop the world, gazing down at the breathtaking landscape below. And with each breath, he grew more resolved to continue his ascent one step at a time, until he stood triumphant at the roof of the world. With a mix of satisfaction and anticipation, the Peak Voyager team bid farewell to Camp 2, descending back to Camp 1 for a night, followed by a track to base camp for another night before making their way to Camp 3. Leaving the familiarity of Camp 2 behind, they retraced their steps along the rugged trail. The descent was no less demanding than their ascent, requiring careful footwork and a focused mind. They navigated the steep slopes and the rocky terrain with caution, their progress steady and deliberate. 
As they descended, the air grew thicker, offering some respite from the thin atmosphere at higher altitudes. The scenery seemed different on the way down, the perspective shifting as they descended from the heights that they had conquered. Despite the fatigue in their bodies, Stevo and Nathan pushed on. As the evening sun dipped below the towering peaks, Stevo and Nathan arrived at Camp One once again. The camp welcomed them like an old friend, offering shelter and respite amidst the unforgiving landscape. Their tired bodies found solace in the familiarity of the campsite. They settled into their tents, grateful for the chance to rest and recharge for the night. The flickering light of headlamps illuminated the surroundings, casting a soft glow on their weary faces. In the stillness of the night, the sounds of the Kumbu icefall echoed in the distance. The anticipation of the final leg of their descent mingled with a touch of melancholy. The sounds of the icefall kept Stevo awake. It was haunting to hear the ice move below them. With night still upon them, a tired Stevo bid farewell to Camp One for now. The path ahead led them once again through the Kumbu Icefall, the same thing whose sounds haunted him through the night. He approached the Icefall with caution, each step calculated, and each movement deliberate. The ever-shifting ice posed new obstacles, demanding his full attention. He skillfully maneuvered across ladders and crevices, the experience gained from their previous journey through the Icefall serving them well. The beauty of the Kumbu Icefall juxtaposed the inherent danger it possessed. Its icy sculptures glistened under the morning sun, offering a momentary distraction from the inherent risks of the terrain. Stevo and Nathan forged ahead, their determination unwavering. They relied on their training, their instincts, and the guidance of their Sherpa guides to navigate through the labyrinth of ice and snow. With every passing step, the icefall receded behind them, signalling their departure from the treacherous zone. Relief washed over them as they ventured into safer territory. The realisation of their achievement and the impending reunion with Base Camp fueled their pace. As they descended further, the familiar sights of Base Camp came into view. To make sure that his health was in tip-top shape, Stevo headed to the medical tent to consult with Julian. Julian entered the tent, a warm smile on his face. Stevo, how are you feeling today? He asked, his voice filled with genuine concern. Stevo sighed and leaned back, his exhaustion evident. Physically, I'm tired, but mentally, I'm determined to keep going. I just want to make sure I'm doing all right, health-wise. Julian nodded understandingly, taking a seat across from Stevo. He began a thorough examination, checking Stevo's vital signs and asking detailed questions about his overall well-being. As Julian listened attentively to Stevo's responses, he provided reassurance and guidance. Your determination is commendable, Stevo. It's crucial, however, that you listen to your body and take care of yourself. Mount Everest presents unique challenges and we need to ensure that you're physically prepared for the ascent. Stevo nodded, acknowledging the doctor's advice. I understand, and I want to prioritize my health. What should I be mindful of as we continue our climb? Julian explained the importance of acclimatization and managing altitude-related symptoms. He emphasized the need to stay hydrated, eat nutritious meals, and maintain a balanced sleep routine. He also reminded Stevo of the symptoms to watch out for, such as headache, dizziness, and shortness of breath, which could indicate altitude sickness. As the conversation progressed, Stevo felt a sense of reassurance. Julian's expertise and guidance instilled confidence in him. He realized that taking care of his health was not only crucial for his own well-being, but also for the success and safety of the entire team. Before leaving the tent, Julian offered a final word of encouragement. Stevo, you've come a long way and I believe in your ability to overcome the challenges ahead. Remember to communicate openly with your teammates and with me if any health concerns arise. Our client's safety is our top priority. Stevo thanked the doctor, feeling a renewed sense of determination and gratitude for the support he had within the Peak Voyager team. The sun cast a warm glow over base camp as Stevo sat outside, enjoying a brief moment of solitude. His conversation with Julian had left him with a newfound appreciation for the physical and mental resilience required to conquer Mount Everest. George joined him, settling down on a nearby rock. 
How did your talk with the doctor go? He asked, his concern evident in his voice. Stevo smiled, his gaze fixed on the majestic peaks in the distance. It was insightful. Julian reminded me of the importance of taking care of ourselves, both physically and mentally. He emphasized that our journey is not just about reaching the summit, but also about staying healthy and making wise decisions along the way. George nodded. Absolutely. We've come so far, and it's crucial that we continue to support each other and listen to our bodies. This mountain demands our respect and resilience. They sat in comfortable silence, a shared understanding passing between them. The challenges they had faced on their journey had tested their limits, pushing them to grow and evolve as individuals. I'm grateful for the strength we've found within ourselves and the support we've received from you and the Peak Voyager team, Stevo said, his voice filled with gratitude. We've become a family, united by a common goal. The bond we've formed will carry us through the tough moments ahead. George nodded, his gaze fixed on the distant peaks. It's incredible how this journey has transformed us. We've learned to push beyond our limits, to embrace discomfort, and to trust our abilities. Mount Everest has become more than just a physical challenge. It's a test of our character and resilience. As they spoke, their voices echoed with determination, echoing the shared resolve that had brought them this far. They discussed their hopes, fears, and dreams. Stevo got up, hugged George and headed to his tent. Nathan was already inside, sleeping. Early the next morning, the group got together and started their journey to Camp 3. As they began their ascent toward Camp 3, the journey ahead seemed both daunting and exhilarating. But Stevo and Nathan knew that they had come too far to turn back now. With resilience in their hearts, they continued their climb, ready to face the challenges that lay ahead, and inching closer to their ultimate goal, the summit of Mount Everest. The trail leading to Camp 3 was steep and unforgiving. The terrain demanded every ounce of his strength and concentration. Stevo's crampons gripped the icy surface, providing the stability he needed to navigate the treacherous slopes. As he ascended, the air grew thinner, the biting cold gnawing at his exposed skin. The wind whispered through the crevices, carrying with it a sense of both challenge and possibility. Stevo drew upon his training, regulating his breathing and pacing himself to adapt to the increasing altitude. Having successfully climbed to Camp 2, Stevo and the team now faced another formidable challenge, the ascent of the Lotse face. This steep, icy slope demanded focus, endurance and unwavering determination. With crampons securely fastened and ice axes in hand, they began their ascent, their movements synchronized with the rhythm of their breath. The fixed lines provided a lifeline, ensuring their safety as they climbed higher, inch by inch. As they made their way up the icy face, the gradient seemed to intensify, the air growing thinner with each step. Stevo's muscles burned with exertion, but he pressed forward, driven by the sheer will to conquer the mountain. The view from the Lotse face was awe-inspiring, a panorama of jagged peaks and vast expanses of ice. The enormity of their surroundings both humbled and invigorated them, serving as a reminder of the magnitude of their quest. The climb to Camp 3 tested his physical and mental endurance like never before. The elements conspired against him, throwing icy winds and blinding snowstorms in his path. But he remained undeterred, his mind focused on the goal that loomed ahead. The biting cold seeped through his layers, challenging his body's warmth. With each gust of wind he fought to maintain his balance, his ice axe serving as both a tool and a lifeline. The relentless snowfall obscured his vision, forcing him to rely on his instincts and the guidance of his teammates. Every step became a battle against the elements, a testament to his indomitable spirit. The camaraderie and support within the Peak Voyager team became his pillar of strength as they pushed forward together, weathering the storm as one. As he reached higher altitudes, the thin air gnawed at his lungs, threatening to steal his breath. But Stevo pressed on, his determination unwavering. He knew that the challenges he faced were an integral part of the Everest experience, and he was prepared to meet them head on. 
Stevo's heart swelled with pride as he finally arrived at Camp 3. The team rejoiced in their achievement, exchanging smiles and congratulatory hugs. The arduous climb had bonded them even further, forging a camaraderie that was unbreakable. They reveled in the shared triumph, knowing that each step had brought them closer to their ultimate goal. The view from Camp 3 was breathtaking, the panorama of snow-capped peaks stretching as far as the eye could see. The realization that they were standing at an altitude of over 7,000 meters filled them with awe and a renewed sense of purpose. As they settled into their tents, Stevo felt a mix of exhaustion and exhilaration. The night at Camp 3 would be a test of endurance, but it was a necessary step in their acclimatization process. They would rest, recharge and prepare for the challenges that lay ahead. This was the last trip up the mountain for acclimatization. The next would be directly to the summit. The next day, as everyone began getting ready to descend to base camp for the last time before the push to the summit, Stevo and Nathan found themselves sitting outside their tents at Camp 3. It had been an arduous climb, and their bodies craved rest and nourishment. Yet, the anticipation of what lay ahead filled the air with an electric energy. Nathan leaned back against a snow-covered boulder, gazing out at the breathtaking vista before them. Can you believe it, Stevo? We're here at Camp 3. The next time we see it, we're going for the summit. Stevo nodded, a mixture of exhaustion and excitement etched on his face. It really does, Nathan. The journey has been incredible so far, but this is where it all becomes even more real. We're so close now, closer than ever to standing on the summit of Mount Everest. The wind whispered through the peaks, carrying with it a sense of anticipation. Stevo turned to Nathan, his eyes sparkling with determination. Remember when you first started training for this expedition? The thought of reaching this point seemed so distant, almost impossible, and yet here we are, defying the odds. Nathan smiled, a glimmer of pride in his eyes. We've come a long way, my friend. The challenges we've faced, the obstacles we've overcome, they've all prepared us for this moment. We're stronger, both physically and mentally, and ready to take on whatever lies ahead. Stevo's gaze shifted to the summit, its majestic peak standing tall in the distance. But let's not forget, Nathan, that the most important thing is to stay focused and humble. The mountain is unforgiving, and we must always respect its power. We'll rely on our skills, our training, and the expertise of our Sherpa guides to guide us safely to the top. Nathan nodded, his expression serious. You're right, Stevo. We must never underestimate the mountain. We'll continue to support one another, watch out for signs of fatigue or altitude sickness, and make wise decisions. The summit will always be there, but our safety and well-being must come first. Silence settled between them, punctuated only by the distant sound of wind sweeping across the snowy slopes. Stevo reached out, placing a hand on Nathan's shoulder. We've been through so much together, Nathan. We've shared the triumphs and the struggles. No matter what happens up there, I'm grateful to have you as my climbing partner and friend. Nathan clasped Stevo's hand, his grip firm and reassuring. Likewise, Stevo. We're in this together until the very end. Let's cherish every moment, embrace the challenges, and support each other every step of the way. With a renewed sense of purpose and determination, Stevo and Nathan rose to their feet. They knew that the road ahead would be grueling, but their hearts burned with a fiery resolve. They were ready to descend to base camp, gather their strength, and then return to the mountainside, ready to conquer every camp and ultimately reach the pinnacle of Mount Everest. Their conversation lingered in the crisp mountain air as they prepared to embark on the final leg of their journey. They were determined to make their mark on the roof of the world, their friendship and shared passion for adventure guiding them onward. The Peak Voyager team began their descent from Camp 3, bidding farewell to the challenging but awe-inspiring surroundings. The path led them back down the steep slopes of the Lordsay face, their movements deliberate and focused. With each step, they carefully maneuvered down the icy terrain, their crampons digging into the hard-packed snow. The fixed lines served as their lifeline, ensuring their safety as they descended, their bodies now adjusted to the thinning air. 
The view from the Lotse face had changed. The familiar landmarks that had greeted them on their ascent now appeared in reverse, as if the mountain itself was bidding them farewell. The awe-inspiring panorama unfolded before their eyes, a testament to their accomplishments and a reminder of the challenges yet to come. As they made their way down, the camaraderie within the team was palpable. They supported and encouraged one another, knowing that the descent was just as demanding as the ascent. The bond that they had formed grew stronger with each passing step, forging a unity that transcended the physical challenges they faced. The team's descent from the Lotse face led them to the familiar site of Camp 2. Weary but exhilarated, Stevo and Nathan entered the camp, greeted by the welcome embrace of their fellow climbers. The air at Camp 2 was filled with a sense of relief and accomplishment. Tents dotted the landscape. Stevo and Nathan settled into their familiar space, shedding their gear and taking a moment to savor the achievement of reaching this milestone. The camp buzzed with activity as climbers shared their stories of their individual journeys and exchanged words of encouragement. It was a melting pot of cultures and backgrounds, united by a common pursuit, the conquer of the world's highest peak. As they looked back at the Lotse face, now in the distance, Stevo and Nathan reflected on the challenges they had overcome. The steep ascent, the biting cold, and the thinning air had tested their limits. Yet they had prevailed, standing stronger and more resilient than ever. With the memory of their successful descent fresh in their minds, Stevo and Nathan knew that their journey was far from over. Base camp beckoned, and they would return to gather their strength before venturing once again into the realm of towering peaks and icy winds. Resting in their tents, surrounded by the rugged beauty of the Himalayas, they allowed themselves a moment of quiet reflection. The memories of their climb to Camp 3 and the exhilaration of their descent served as fuel for what lay ahead, the final push toward the summit of Mount Everest. Stevo and Nathan began the descent from Camp 2, leaving behind the familiarity of their temporary home on the mountainside. The air was crisp and a sense of anticipation filled their hearts as they embarked on the journey back to Camp 1. The path leading down from Camp 2 presented its own set of challenges. They carefully navigated the steep slopes, their crampons biting into the hard-packed snow, providing traction and stability. As they made their way down, the landscape gradually transformed. The icy cliffs and towering seracs gave way to gentler slopes and scattered rock formations. The sounds of ice cracking were replaced by the rustling of wind through the rocky crevices. Stevo and Nathan arrived at Camp 1, greeted by the comforting sight of familiar tents and fellow climbers. The camp exuded a sense of camaraderie and resilience. Relief washed over them as they shed their backpacks and settled into their tents. The physical strain of the descent began to subside, replaced by a profound sense of accomplishment. Camp 1 provided a much-needed respite for Stevo and Nathan. They embraced the opportunity to rest and recover, allowing their bodies to replenish and rejuvenate before their final push to the summit. They took advantage of the rest day, utilizing the time to tend to their equipment, adjust their gear and recharge their energy. They shared stories with their fellow climbers, exchanging tales of triumphs and challenges, forging a bond that transcended language and cultural barriers. In the quiet moments of solitude, Stevo and Nathan reflected on the magnitude of their undertaking. The summit loomed even closer, yet they knew that patience and careful acclimatization were paramount to their success. They embraced the rest of the day with gratitude, knowing it would prepare them for the arduous journey ahead. The rest day at Camp 1 came to an end, and Stevo and Nathan felt the magnetic pull of the mountains urging them forward. The time had come to leave the comfort of Camp 1 and continue their descent. The only problem, though, was that they would descend quite late in the afternoon through the Kumbu Icefall. Stevo found himself in an unusual position. Due to various circumstances, he was the last climber of the day to make his way through the treacherous Kumbu Icefall. The late sun afternoon bathed the frozen landscape, casting elongated shadows across the towering ice formation. As Stevo travelled through the icefall, he couldn't help but notice the subtle changes caused by the melting ice. 
The normally stable surface had softened under the warmth of the sun, making each step more precarious. The ice screws which anchored the fixed ropes were gradually loosening its grip. Stevo quickened his pace, aware that time was not on his side. The prospect of navigating through the Kumbu icefall alone was daunting, especially under the deteriorating conditions. His heart pounded in his chest as he focused on maintaining his balance amidst the shifting terrain. With every step, Stevo could feel the tension in the ropes as they strained against the weakened ice screws. He urged himself forward, trying to cover as much ground as possible before the situation escalated further. As Stevo pressed on, he could hear a faint rumbling sound. Glancing up, he watched in horror as one of the ice screws started to slowly pull out from the ice, causing a section of the fixed rope to sag. His heart raced as he realized the potential danger that lay ahead. With each passing minute, the ice screws started pulling out further and further. The tension in the ropes weakened and Stevo could sense the impending disaster. He knew he had to act quickly to find a safer route or risk falling into a crevice. But it was too late. The ice screws ripped from the mountainside and Stevo lost his balance. He found himself hurtling downward, disappearing into the gaping maw of a crevice. Stevo trembled through the icy darkness. Fear surged through his veins, but he refused to succumb to panic. Stevo's descent into the crevice was swift and disorienting. The impact of the fall jarred his body, causing intense pain to shoot through his limbs. As he landed on a narrow ledge, his vision blurred and darkness consumed his consciousness. Outside, the sun sank below the horizon, casting the icefall into darkness. Unbeknownst to Stevo, hours passed as he lay unconscious on the ledge. In the depths of the crevice, he fought a battle between life and oblivion. Nathan's heart pounded with a mixture of excitement and nervous anticipation as he arrived at base camp. The familiar sight of colorful tents nestled against the rugged backdrop of the Himalayas filled him with a sense of awe. As he settled into camp, Nathan's eyes constantly scanned the horizon, searching for any sign of Stevo's arrival. Each passing minute felt like an eternity, and his mind played out a whirlwind of scenarios. He longed to see his friend's familiar face and share the excitement and challenges that awaited them on the mountain. As the minutes turned into hours, Nathan's eagerness gave way to a growing sense of unease. The weight of uncertainty settled upon Nathan's shoulders and he couldn't help but feel a deep longing for his friend's presence. Unable to contain his panic any longer, Nathan approached George. His voice trembled with concern as he pleaded, George, it's been hours. What if something happened to Stevo? We can't just sit here and wait. We, we need to do something. Wait, Stevo isn't with you? No, he was the last to cross through the icefall, and I haven't seen him walk into the camp yet. He met Nathan's gaze with a calm demeanor, recognizing the urgency in his voice. Nathan, follow me. We need to arrange for a search party. With a sense of urgency, he gathered the most experienced climbers from the Peak Voyager team, along with volunteers from other teams who were willing to lend a hand in the search effort. George carefully assessed the situation, considering the risks and challenges that lay ahead. He emphasized the importance of safety and briefed the team on the treacherous nature of the Kumbu Icefall. Each member was equipped with essential rescue gear and provisions, the determination to find Stevo fueling their resolve. As the search party assembled, George huddled them together, outlining the plan of action. He emphasized the need for a systematic search, dividing the team into smaller groups to cover different sections of the Kumbu Icefall. Their goal was to meticulously comb through the crevices and treacherous terrain, leaving no stone unturned. George assigned experienced climbers to lead each group, ensuring they were familiar with the area and equipped to handle any challenges that may arise. He stressed the importance of communication and maintaining a tight-knit structure, reminding them to stay connected through radios and coordinate their efforts effectively. As the search party ventured into the Kumbu Icefall, they were met with its unforgiving nature. The towering seracs and precarious ice formations posed constant threats but the climbers pressed forward, driven by the urgency to find Stevo. Each step was deliberate, 
Their senses heightened as they navigated the icy labyrinth. The cracking sound of shifting ice echoed in the air, a constant reminder of the danger that surrounded them. Yet, they remained focused and determined, their hearts filled with hope that they would locate their missing comrade. George led by example, his steady presence and wealth of experience instilling confidence in the team. He encouraged them to trust their instincts and to be vigilant in their search. They moved with unwavering determination, their collective efforts a testament to the unbreakable bond of the mountaineering community. As Stevo slowly regained consciousness, a jolt of excruciating pain shot through his body. His head throbbed and his vision was blurred. As the fog in his mind lifted, he realized he was lying in the heart of a frigid glacier in the Kumbu Icefall. Panic welled up within him as he attempted to move, only to be met with searing agony. With each passing moment, Stevo's despair deepened. The piercing pain in his broken right leg and arm served as a harsh reminder of the fall he had endured in the Kumbu Icefall. He called out once again, his voice filled with desperation, hoping that someone would hear his cries and come to his rescue. But the icy winds carried his pleas away, leaving him alone with his thoughts and excruciating agony. As the pain racked his body, Stevo's mind turned to his loved ones back home. Images of his family, friends and all that he had accomplished flooded his thoughts. He replayed cherished memories and contemplated the moments he may never experience again. Regret and longing intertwined, adding to the weight of his desperate situation. With every passing moment, the sense of isolation deepened. Stevo's cries diminished to muffled sobs as he came to terms with the possibility that he may not be found. The immense silence of the glacier mocked his existence, intensifying his feelings of vulnerability and despair. In the depths of his solitude, he grappled with the grim reality that he might meet his end in this desolate place. As the hours stretched into what felt like an eternity, Stevo clung to the memories that had shaped his life. He found solace in the moments of triumph, the friendships forged, and the experiences that had defined him. In the face of unimaginable pain and impending doom, he held on to the fragments of joy and love that had woven themselves into the fabric of his being. George and Nathan stood by as two climbers looked down a glacier in the icefall, the weight of worry etched on their faces. George took a deep breath before addressing the grim reality that they might not find Stevo soon. With a somber tone, he began to explain to Nathan the potential consequences of being trapped in the Kumbu Icefall for an extended period. George emphasized the chilling nature of the Kumbu Icefall and the rapid onset of hypothermia in such extreme conditions. He explained how prolonged exposure to the cold could lead to a dangerous drop in core body temperature, causing shivering, confusion, loss of coordination, and eventually, unconsciousness. Hypothermia posed a significant threat to Stevo's survival, especially if he had inadequate protection against the biting cold. He explained the potential consequences of Stevo's sustained injuries. Without immediate medical attention, broken bones and internal injuries could worsen, leading to intense pain, swelling and potentially life-threatening complications. George stressed the importance of timely medical intervention in such situations to prevent further harm and improve chances of survival. George also brought attention to the limited access to water in the Kumbu Icefall and the potential for dehydration. He explained how climbers exerted themselves even in cold environments and the body's continual need for fluids. Without adequate hydration, Stevo would be at the risk of fatigue, impaired cognitive function and diminished physical abilities, further complicating his predicament. He delved into the severe threat of frostbite in the frigid Kumbu Icefall. He described the impact of freezing temperatures on exposed skin and extremities, leading to tissue damage and potential loss of fingers, toes or even limbs. The longer Stevo remained trapped without proper protection or medical care, 
the greater the risk of frostbite and its devastating consequences. With a heavy heart, George addressed the toll that the isolation and uncertainty could take on Stevo's mental and emotional well-being. He explained the potential for anxiety, panic and despair. George stressed the importance of supporting each other during this challenging time and staying strong for Stevo's sake. Stevo's consciousness flickered in and out as he lay on the icy ledge, his broken body trembling with pain. The glacier enveloped him, its frigid embrace a constant reminder of his dire situation. With each passing moment, the reality of his isolation and the uncertainty of rescue grew more profound. He fought to stay conscious, desperately clinging to hope. The pain in his shattered leg and arm intensified with every attempted movement. The mere thought of trying to free himself from the icy grip of the crevice sent waves of agony through his body. He knew that any attempt to move could worsen his injuries, yet he couldn't shake the desperate urge to escape the confines of the glacier. Time seemed to stretch endlessly as Stevo cried for help. His anguished pleas reverberated within the icy crevice, but there was no one to hear them. The deafening silence that followed only deepened his sense of despair. Tears mingled with his cries as he grappled with the terrifying thought that he might die alone in this frozen abyss. Isolation became Stevo's unwelcome companion in the glacier. His mind danced between vivid recollections of his loved ones and the looming possibility of never seeing them again. Loneliness gnawed at his soul, but he refused to surrender to despair. He drew solace from cherished memories, finding solace in the warmth they brought to his frozen existence. Each passing hour intensified Stevo's yearning for rescue. Thoughts of the search party and his comrades flooded his mind. He clung to the belief that they were tirelessly searching for him, their determination bridging the divide between his isolation and the hope of reunion. The thought of their unwavering efforts kept his flickering flame of hope alive. In his weakest moments, Stevo contemplated surrendering to the numbing cold and pain. Thoughts of death whispered like a siren's call, enticing him to release his grip on life's fragile thread. Yet, even amidst the darkness, a flicker of determination burned within him. He fought against the seductive lure of surrendering, clinging to the hope of rescue. Just when Stevo's spirit teetered on the edge of despair, a faint sound reached his ears. Suddenly, a beam of light pierced through the darkness, illuminating the icy walls of the crevice. Stevo's eyes widened in disbelief as he realized that someone was coming for him. The light grew stronger, cutting through the gloom and casting a lifeline of hope upon his shattered body. It was a ray of light in his darkest hour. As the figure emerged from the shadows, Stevo's heart swelled with relief and gratitude. It was George. His face was a mix of concern and determination, his eyes filled with unwavering resolve. Stevo's voice trembled as he expressed his gratitude for their timely arrival, realizing that without their efforts, his fate would have been sealed. The search team worked meticulously to free Stevo from the icy grip of the crevice. It was a painstaking process as they had to carefully navigate the treacherous terrain while ensuring his safety. With ropes, harnesses and sheer determination, they meticulously maneuvered Stevo onto a stretcher, immobilizing his broken limbs to prevent further injury. George huddled with the search team, carefully considering their options. Stevo's injuries were severe, and time was of the essence. After weighing the risks and logistics, George made the difficult decision to take Stevo to Camp 1 for a helicopter rescue instead of base camp. It was a calculated move to minimize the dangers of navigating through the treacherous Kumbu icefall as he had fallen closer to Camp 1 than to base camp. George addressed the team, emphasizing the importance of communication, teamwork and unwavering focus on Stevo's well-being. The early morning air was crisp as the team began their ascent from the spot where he had fallen towards Camp 1. George led the way, his pace deliberate and steady. They traversed the familiar terrain, their path illuminated by the soft glow of headlamps. 
The gravity of the situation hung heavily in the air, but their determination propelled them forward. The team finally reached Camp 1. Fatigue weighed heavily upon them, but their spirits soared, knowing they were one step closer to the helicopter evacuation point. They quickly set up a temporary shelter, ensuring Stevo's comfort while they awaited the arrival of the rescue helicopter. George communicated with the rescue coordination team, providing them with the precise location and situation at Camp 1. They coordinated the logistics for the helicopter evacuation, considering the altitude and weather conditions. The team remained on high alert, ready to execute the plan as soon as the helicopter arrived. As they waited for the helicopter, the team hovered between hope and apprehension. Time seemed to stretch infinitely as they monitored Stevo's condition, providing comfort and reassurance. Each passing minute intensified the urgency of the situation, heightening their anticipation for the sound of rotors slicing through the air. Finally, the sound of a distant helicopter broke the silence. Excitement and relief washed over the team as they prepared for the helicopter's arrival. The helicopter descended, its rotor blades slicing through the thin air. The team quickly secured Stevo onto a stretcher, making sure he was stable for the evacuation. The deafening roar of the helicopter filled the mountainous landscape as the experienced pilots skillfully maneuvered in the challenging terrain. With practiced precision, the team carefully transferred Stevo into the waiting helicopter. As the helicopter's engine roared, Stevo struggled to find the strength to speak. Each breath was accompanied by a sharp wave of pain coursing through his broken body. He turned his gaze toward Nathan and George, his eyes filled with a mixture of agony and gratitude. I... I can't find the words, Stevo managed to utter, his voice strained. But know that I'm thankful for everything. Nathan's eyes welled up with tears as he reached out and gently squeezed Stevo's uninjured hand. You don't have to say anything, Stevo, he whispered. We understand. Just focus on getting better. George stood over Stevo's other side, his voice filled with compassion. Stevo, you're a fighter, he said, his voice steady despite the turbulent emotions within. We've been through so much together, and this is just another hurdle. You're not alone in this journey. We'll be with you every step of the way, supporting you until you make a full recovery. A tear slipped down Stevo's cheek as he nodded weakly, his pain evident in every line of his face. He knew that the road ahead would be long and arduous, but he drew strength from the unwavering support of his friends. With a faint smile, he whispered, Thank you, George. Thank you for believing in me. With those heartfelt words, the rescue team sprang into action, ensuring Stevo was securely fastened before the aircraft whisked him away from Camp 1. As he disappeared into the sky, Nathan and George stood side by side, their hearts heavy with concern but brimming with hope for Stevo's recovery. At base camp, almost all the climbers stood outside to watch the helicopter take Stevo off the mountain. Julian held Letitia in his arms, comforting her. The helicopter soared through the vast expanse of the Himalayas, its rotors slicing through the thin mountain air. As Stevo lay on the stretcher, his gaze fixed on the panoramic view unfolding before him. Majestic peaks pierced the azure sky, their snow-capped summits glistening in the sunlight. Stevo marveled at the sheer beauty of the landscape, a stark contrast to the pain and chaos he had recently endured. The helicopter followed the path of the Kumbu Valley, snaking its way through the towering peaks. Stevo watched in awe as the vibrant green valleys and terraced fields came into view, nestled among the rugged mountains. Tiny villages dotted the landscape, their colourful prayer flags fluttering in the breeze, sending blessings to the heavens. It was a scene of serenity and resilience, a reminder of the vibrant culture that thrived amidst these harsh surroundings. The helicopter passed over the bustling town of Namche Bazaar, perched on the mountainside like a jewel in the rugged terrain. Stevo's eyes scanned the rooftops and narrow streets below, a place he had traversed on his way to Mount Everest. 
He couldn't help but smile at the memories of the lively markets, cozy tea houses, and the warm hospitality of the Sherpa people. As the helicopter climbed higher, the vastness of the Himalayan range stretched out before them. Stevo's eyes widened as he took in the breathtaking sight. The helicopter began its descent towards Kathmandu, the bustling capital of Nepal. Stevo's gaze shifted from the towering peaks to the cityscape below. The chaos of the city gradually unfolded as buildings and streets came into focus. The vibrant blend of colours, sounds and smells filled the air, a stark contrast to the solitude and serenity of the mountains. It was a reminder that life carried on beyond the confines of the Himalayas and that Stevo's journey was far from over. The helicopter touched down at the medical facility where a team of skilled doctors and nurses stood ready to receive Stevo. They swiftly transferred him onto a gurney, rushing him into the facility for immediate treatment. The sense of urgency permeated the air as medical professionals assessed his injuries and devised a plan for his recovery. As Stevo was settled into a hospital bed, his mind filled with a mix of relief and apprehension. The reality of his injuries settled upon him, knowing that a long road to recovery lay ahead. In the days that followed, Stevo underwent surgeries and endured the pain of rehabilitation. The medical team worked tirelessly to mend his broken bones, their expertise and care guiding him through the healing process. As Stevo lay in the hospital bed in Kathmandu, his body slowly recovering from the injuries he'd sustained on Mount Everest, he couldn't ignore the stinging pain in his extremities. He glanced down at his hands and feet, and a shiver ran through him as he took in the sight of his frostbitten flesh. His fingers and toes were discoloured, a pale shade of greyish blue, and they felt numb, as if detached from his body. The frostbite was a cruel reminder of the harsh conditions he had endured in the unforgiving environment of the Kumbu Icefall. The freezing temperatures and biting winds had taken their toll, despite the protective gear and precautions he had taken. The damage was extensive, and he knew that the road to recovery would be long and uncertain. The medical team explained the severity of his frostbite, warning him of the potential complications and the risk of tissue damage. They reassured him that they would do everything possible to save his limbs, but they couldn't guarantee the outcome. Stevo felt a mix of fear and determination. He knew that he would need to face the physical and emotional challenges that lay ahead with unwavering strength and resilience. Each day, the medical staff diligently tended to Stevo's frostbitten extremities, carefully monitoring his condition and administering treatments to promote healing. They employed various methods, from warm water baths to medications, to encourage blood flow and prevent infection. Stevo endured the agonizing pain. His teeth gritted as he fought back tears, holding on to the hope that, with time, his body would recover and regain its vitality. As Stevo slowly regained his strength, he reflected on the life-altering experience he had endured. The mountain had humbled him, but it had also installed with him a profound appreciation for life's fragility and the resilience of the human spirit. Stevo vowed to honour his second chance at life by cherishing every moment and pursuing his dreams with unwavering passion. A few days after the dramatic rescue in the icefall, Nathan and the rest of the Peak Voyager team eagerly gathered outside Stevo's hospital room, their faces filled with a mix of anticipation and concern. They had returned from their successful summit of Mount Everest, but their thoughts were never far from their injured friend. As the door swung open, they entered one by one, their eyes lighting up at the sight of Stevo lying in the hospital bed. Surrounded by his friends, Stevo listened intently as the team recounted their incredible journey to the summit. They spoke of the challenges they faced, the indomitable spirit that carried them forward, and the overwhelming sense of accomplishment they felt when they reached the peak. Each story was punctuated with laughter, a reminder of the camaraderie that had bonded them throughout their expedition. The room buzzed with excitement as the Peak Voyager team presented Stevo with a special gift, a flag that they had carried to the summit in his honour. 
It bore the signatures and messages of each team member, a symbol of their unwavering support and determination. Stevo's eyes filled with tears as he clutched the flag, feeling the weight of their love and solidarity. One by one, the team members approached Stevo's bedside, offering words of encouragement and support. They spoke of their admiration for his resilience, his unwavering determination and the inspiration he has provided throughout their journey. Their words carried a profound sense of gratitude and affection, reminding Stevo that he was not alone in his recovery. Amidst the laughter and celebration, there were also moments of quiet reflection. The team shared stories of their encounters with adversity, the moments of doubt and fear they had faced. They acknowledged the fragility of life and the importance of cherishing each moment. Stevo found solace in their shared vulnerability, knowing that they had all been tested by the mountain in different ways. As the team continued to visit Stevo in the hospital, their conversations turned toward the future. They dreamed of new adventures, of conquering other peaks, and of continuing to support and uplift one another. Stevo, though physically confined to the hospital bed, felt a renewed sense of purpose and determination to overcome the challenges that lay ahead. The Peak Voyager team made a solemn vow to stand by Stevo throughout his recovery. They pledged to assist him in any way possible to provide unwavering support and encouragement as he regained his strength. Stevo was moved by their commitment and felt a deep sense of gratitude for the friendships forged amidst the unforgiving terrain of Mount Everest. In between the serious conversations, there were moments of light-heartedness and laughter that filled the hospital room. The team's playful banter and shared inside jokes created an atmosphere of joy and positivity. Stevo felt the weight of his injuries and struggles momentarily lifted as he immersed himself in the warmth and humor of his friends. As the weeks passed, Stevo's condition improved and the hospital became a place of hope and healing. The Peak Voyager team, with their unwavering support, became his guiding light through the darkest moments. As the morning sun cast its golden rays upon the bustling city of Kathmandu, Stevo sat at the hospital entrance in his wheelchair, his heart filled with anticipation. The day had finally come for his discharge. With his bags packed and a grateful smile on his face, he took a deep breath, ready to embark on the next chapter of his journey. Stevo bid farewell to the hospital staff who had cared for him during his recovery. He expressed his heartfelt gratitude for their tireless efforts, their kindness and their unwavering support. Their smiles and well wishes echoed in his mind as he went through the hospital doors, feeling a renewed sense of hope and determination. He was handed his own crutches to replace the wheelchair for the outside world. Waiting just outside the hospital, Nathan and the Peak Voyager team welcomed Stevo with open arms. They had all flown back to Nepal to celebrate his discharge. Their eyes sparkled with joy and relief as they embraced their friend, their unspoken words of support and love filling the air. Stevo felt a deep sense of gratitude for their unwavering presence throughout his journey of healing. In celebration of Stevo's discharge, the team decided to indulge in a traditional Nepali meal at a local restaurant. They savoured their rich flavours and spices, their laughter and animated conversations filling the air. Sivo's taste buds danced with delight as he embraced the cultural experience, savouring each bite and relishing the sense of normalcy and camaraderie. With Sivo's mobility improving, the team embarked on a journey to explore the treasures of Kathmandu. They wandered through the narrow streets of the ancient city, marvelling at the intricate architecture, vibrant prayer flags and the rhythmic chants that fill the air. Stevo's eyes widened with wonder as he soaked in the rich history and spirituality that surrounded him. At the iconic Budanath stupa, Stevo and the team found solace and peace. They circled the stupa, spinning the prayer wheels and offering their prayers for continued strength and healing. The serene atmosphere enveloped them, reminding them of the power of gratitude and the interconnectedness of all beings. In the tranquil surroundings of the Pashupati temple, Stevo lit a candle and offered a prayer for all those who had supported him on his journey. The flickering flames mirrored the flicker of hope that burned within him, illuminating the path ahead. 
The team stood by his side, their silent presence, a reminder of the unwavering support that would carry him forward. As the sun began to set, Stevo found himself at the peaceful gardens of Swayambu, also known as the Monkey Temple. Surrounded by playful monkeys and the panoramic view of the city, he sat in contemplation, reflecting on the challenges he had faced and the lessons he had learned. The gentle breeze whispered words of resilience and determination, strengthening his resolve to embrace life's uncertainties. With a heavy heart, Stevo bid farewell to the vibrant city of Kathmandu. The time had come for him to leave the place that had become a significant part of his healing journey. As the plane soared into the sky, he gazed out of the window, taking one last glimpse of the majestic Himalayas that had both tested and inspired him. Upon his return, Stevo was greeted by a warm embrace from his family and loved ones at the airport. Tears of joy flowed freely as they expressed their relief and happiness to have him back safely. In their arms, Stevo felt a sense of belonging and unconditional love, knowing that they had a support system that would stand by him through thick and thin. Many South Africans stood at the gate to watch the miracle climber return home. He received cheers as they spotted him with his crutches. Stevo's return to his community was met with an outpouring of support and celebration. The local mountaineering community organized a gathering to honor his courage and determination. He stood before them, humbled by their recognition, and shared his story of resilience, emphasizing the importance of perseverance and unity in the face of adversity. Amidst the celebration, Stevo took a moment to express his gratitude to everyone who had contributed to his recovery. He thanked the medical team, his friends, the Peak Voyager, and the community for their unwavering support. Their belief in him had fueled his own belief in his ability to overcome obstacles and emerge stronger than ever. As Stevo settled back into his daily life, he carried the lessons learned from his experience with him. He embraced each day with a renewed sense of purpose, cherishing every moment and seeking new adventures that would push his limits. He knew that his journey was far from over, and he was determined to make the most of every opportunity that came his way. Though Stevo longed to return to the mountains that had captivated his heart, he understood that his physical recovery would take time. However, he found solace in the knowledge that the mountains resided within him an unyielding spirit that would continue to guide him in all aspects of his life. He carried the lessons learned and the memories forged on Everest forever etched in his being. The bond between Stevo and the Peak Voyager team remained unbroken, forged through the shared experiences and challenges they had faced together. Despite the physical distance that now separated them, their connection remained strong. They continued to support one another, celebrating each other's triumphs and providing a pillar of strength during times of adversity. The events that unfolded in the Kumbu Icefall had forever changed Stevo's perspective on life. He no longer took the simplest pleasures for granted, cherishing each moment and relishing the beauty that surrounded him. He embraced a newfound sense of gratitude and sought to live a life filled with purpose and meaning, honoring the resilience that had carried him through his darkest moments. Epilogue Four years had passed since the fateful day when Stevo fell into the icy depths of the Kumbu Icefall, his dreams seemingly shattered. Yet, the indomitable spirit within him refused to yield. Stevo's unwavering determination to conquer Mount Everest burned brighter than ever, fueled by the fire that had been ignited within him. In a remarkable turn of events, Peak Voyager, the very team he had embarked upon his ill-fated journey with, reached out to him with an offer that would change his life. Recognizing his unwavering spirit and the incredible strength he had shown in the face of adversity, they offered him the chance to return to Everest, this time with all expenses covered and his place secured among their team of seasoned climbers. Overwhelmed with gratitude, Stevo accepted the offer, his heart filled with a mixture of excitement and trepidation. The journey back to Everest felt like a chance at redemption, 
an opportunity to reclaim his dreams and conquer the mighty peak that had eluded him before. Under the watchful guidance of Peak Voyager's experienced mountaineers, Stevo embarked on a rigorous training regimen to prepare his body and mind for the challenges that awaited him. Each day was a testament to his unwavering dedication, and he pushed himself beyond his limits, honing his skills and building the resilience necessary for the arduous climb that lay ahead. Finally, the day arrived when Stevo found himself standing once again at the base of the majestic Everest, a mix of emotions welled up inside him. The mountain stood as a towering reminder of his past struggles and the unrelenting power of nature. Yet, it also beckoned him forward, promising the possibility of triumph and a chance to rewrite his story. Supported by his teammates and guided by the collective expertise of the Peak Voyager team, Stevo began his ascent. The familiar terrain unfolded before him, each step a testament to his unyielding spirit and his unwavering determination to reach the summit. The hardships and the pain of the past were replaced with a renewed sense of purpose and a profound appreciation for the beauty and grandeur of the mountains. As the days turned into weeks, Stevo and his companions battled through snowstorms, navigated treacherous ridges and overcame physical and mental obstacles. Together, they forged a path toward the summit, bound by their shared goal and a deep sense of respect for the mountain that loomed above them. And then, the moment arrived when Stevo stood at the pinnacle of Mount Everest, a testament to his unyielding spirit, the resilience of the human soul, and the power of second chances. The view from the summit was breathtaking, a reminder of the vastness of the world and the boundless possibilities that awaited those who dared to dream. As Stevo descended from the heights, a newfound sense of fulfillment filled his heart. He had conquered the physical and emotional demons that had haunted him for so long. The journey had transformed him, not just as a climber, but as a person, imparting lessons of resilience, gratitude, and the unwavering pursuit of one's dreams. In the years that followed, Stevo's story continued to inspire countless individuals around the world. He shared his experiences not only of triumph, but also of the challenges faced along the way. He became an advocate for resilience, using his voice to empower others to confront their fears and embrace the opportunities that lay before them. Peak Voyager, recognizing the impact Stevo had had on their team and the mountaineering community, established a scholarship program in his honor. The Stevo for Mark Everest Scholarship aimed to support aspiring climbers who faced similar challenges and obstacles on their own journey to the mountains. It was a testament to Stevo's enduring legacy and a way for him to give back to the community that had supported him throughout his own mountaineering endeavors. As the years went by, Stevo's passion for the mountains remained unwavering. He continued to explore new peaks, embracing the thrill of adventure and the awe-inspiring beauty that awaited him in every corner of the world. A few months after summiting Everest, he finally summited Mount Vinson, the final of the seven summits he sought to climb. But amidst his own pursuits, Stevo never forgot the lessons he had learned on Mount Everest. He remained committed to spreading awareness about mountain safety, advocating for responsible climbing practices and promoting environmental conservation. Through his speaking engagements and involvement in mountaineering organizations, he strived to create a safer and more sustainable future for climbers and the fragile mountain ecosystems they cherished. In his personal life, Stevo found love and companionship with a fellow adventurer, someone who shared his passion for the outdoors and understood the profound impact that mountains had on his soul. Together they embarked on countless expeditions, facing the challenges and joys of the mountaineering world side by side. And so, as the sun set on the peaks of the world, Stevo Fermark's journey continued, forever intertwined with the mountains that had shaped him. He remained a beacon of resilience, inspiring others to embrace their dreams and never give up in the face of adversity.